Hello folks, it's been a little while since we did any used car stuff isn't it? and uh, I really miss doing some of these. They're not always the most popular videos but these thousand pound car game ones I quite enjoy and I've decided to do an extra special one. So this is going to be the weird and the wonderful. So we're going to see a couple of very nasty examples of cars on here and maybe just one or two that you may possibly consider owning. A bit of a laugh really, hope you enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, keep watching. So pinned in the top comment is my link to Audible, which is Amazon's audiobook service. I use it all the time when I'm driving and on public transport and stuff. I've just did, had the Jason Plato autobiography, which was brilliant. I've got the Louis Theroux one next. Uh, it doesn't get on my nerves as much as the radio does, so that's always good. So click through that link. Amazon will know I've sent you. If you sign up, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. Just get on with your life. Right, enough of that. Let's get to the content. Okay, folks, so here's the first one of these wonderful beauties. For all these cars, I'm looking at cars under a grand with less than 100,000 miles on the clock. And at this price point, when we say on the clock, that's literally what I mean, because you've got to think some of these cars might have had a haircut in their lifetime. So uh, with any of these, if you were seriously considering buying any of them, remember it's a thousand pound car. You probably need another thousand pound in your pocket to fix it when it goes wrong and buyer beware, you know, so really get these things checked out. There's some real rarities in here and some oddball things, but there's a couple of cars that actually might not be too bad. So let's have a look. So this little beauty here is the Subaru Justy. Uh, you can see all original paintwork. I don't think the panels are originally from that car, but I'm sure they've got the original paint on them. Um, it's quite a nice effect they've done though, isn't it? You know, you've got silver there, a bit of blue over here, maybe some red, all a bit impressionist shall we say nice mud splats on there as well i always like to see that in a, a car listing uh, in the listing he goes on to say that it sold the front end so it's fitted a blue one so that's good because you definitely wouldn't have wanted it with the original silver front end would you spent a bit of time cleaning it out a covid mask around the around the gear stick and a bit of kitchen towel hanging around there i'd rather not know what that's been used for Wheels look to be in pristine condition. And there's a sailing boat in the back. I mean, it's not often you buy a car with a sailing boat in the back. Uh, 81,000 miles on the clock. That's the old front end. And picture of the steering wheel on its side. At 795 quid, that one, ladies and gents. It says 70,400 miles on the clock. It's showing 81,000 miles on the clock. Here I have a Subaru Justy R 998cc. 30 quid road tax, has MOT and have had a valet inside and out. It looks like it. Good, solid, all round, has lightweight weight power and been serviced well over the years. Only 81,400 miles. I guess this is a mistake. You'll be pleased over 60 MPG on long runs and lots of amazing room in car. Just these are fitted with a timer chain, not a belt, so it saves money, blah, blah, blah. Back seat folds flat for large loads like cookers and fridges. You'll be amazed. Lots of room saves higher in a van. I mean, I don't immediately look at that and think I'll use that for for furniture removals, I must admit. But yeah, I guess it's quite square, so probably you can fit a bit in there with the back seats down. In all seriousness, it might, it might be a perfectly good, reliable car. But I think 800 quid for something that looks like a patchwork quilt's a bit a bit lively in all fairness right suzuki jimny this is on bids so it might go for over a grand i would assume it will go for over a grand because jimny's are really popular again now obviously that new jimny came out then they stopped making it and a, a two-year-old one's worth more than it was when it was new which is bonkers but this is the old jimny they're cool little things aren't they and they're actually pretty capable cars that interior is absolutely hideous. It looks like my nan's old uh, sofa, but it's still got a certain charm to it, isn't it? A uh, little bit of paintwork damage there. It looks like someone should have gone to Specsavers before trying to unlock the car door. I'm not exactly sure what's gone on with that, but yeah, it looks a little bit rough. And obviously the bodywork's got some damage on. You can it's got the um the air intake up here, which suggests it's been it's had some proper off-road use, which is good in an off-road car, not enough. SUVs and four-wheel drive cars get used off-road, do they? So it's nice. Good example of the sort after Jimny vehicles had has almost new off-road tyres, a lift kit and a snorkel. It's got two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, high range and four-wheel drive, low range options. They all work as they should. 
Car's been used mostly in and around stables. It's got age-related marks, drives well for its age. Everything works as it should. Only for sale as I've bought a pickup to tow our horse box. 95,000 miles. No mention of service history or anything. That's quite an interesting little car, I thought. So I thought I'd mention it. Right, check this one out. You don't see too many of these, that's for sure. A Proton Jumbuck. It's 2006 model. It's got MOT, 77,000 miles. Top spec model. Look at that bad boy. As any viewers in Australia might say, that's a beaut ute. This is my mug I got from Mike Brewer's wife. Thanks, Michelle Brewer. Right, I know what a lot of you are probably thinking, but I actually love this. I think this is cool. Uh, I know I'm strange. I think this is cool. It's got a certain something to it. That back end seen more action than Michael Jackson's plastic surgeon. Look at that. That's rough. The gaffer tape's a nice touch. <laughs> I always like to see gaffer tape on a car. Shows it's been well maintained. Yeah, I mean, I know that's really not a fine example of a vehicle, is it? But I just think it's got a certain cool. A bit, a bit of arrogance driving around in that. Check that out. Wow. It's certainly got some character in the bodywork, shall we say. Uh, let's have a read about it. Yes, it's available. Check this out for a car listing. Yes, it's available. If you ask it's available, I'll assume you haven't read the description and ignore you. That's a good way to sell a car, mate. Much smaller than your usual pickup truck. Very easy to park in standard parking bays. Cheap to run. Drives superb when sorted. We need grammar lessons for the whole of the used car industry, by the way. Uh, these little utes had the suspension handle in tune by Lotus and are great fun to drive. All the controls are light, easy to drive with excellent visibility. They only weigh just over 1,000 kilos. 1.5 Mitsubishi petrol engine, two keys, original handbook, documentation. MOT expires 6th of December 21. Nah. New battery fitted this week. Alloys electric windows, central locking. Bought this ute sight unseen to replace my own car. It's a newer top spec GLS. On closer inspection, it's very tatty and won't pass the MOT without money spending on it, including a clutch. Hence, I'm putting her straight up for sale. Tailgate is bashed in. Electric window, passenger side don't work. Alloys are scruffy. Remote locking doesn't work. Interior is pretty decent and will clean up. 900 quid with, for a car that needs a load of work doing for its MOT? No, I don't think so. Right, Jeep Cherokee Limited CRD 2.8 diesel auto. Starts first time and runs normal on tick over, but seems to run on three cylinders when at low revs. Uh, 900 quid on bids and the bidding ends in 17 hours and 16 minutes. So let's have a look at this. Again, I know I'm strange, but I sort of like these. I mean, it's a... It's a terrible design, really, but for some reason I like them. Look at the tow bar on that. I guess it's got to clear the um, spare wheel on the back, but wow, jealous. MOT until June 2022, electric windows, aircon, leather seats, side steps, tow bar, two keys, and 90,500 miles. Runs fine at higher revs, for example, when doing 60 mph on dual carriageway. Possible fuel pump issue, four-wheel drive, everything else on the vehicle works fine. Cash on collection, no time wasters, please. Okay, so <clears throat> that's obviously got issues. They're being upfront about it. No mention of service history on it. It might have a bit of sketchy history. Who knows? Who knows? Because there is no service history according to that ad. Now, there is definitely a problem there. And with these things, you would want to get that checked out. And you'd want to get a mechanic out to have a look at it before you bought it. Because parts on these cars can be really, really expensive and not the easiest things to source. So I would suggest with anything like that, it's not a walk away from it when they're telling you it's got problems, but it's an investigate, get a price for it before you buy. Look at this beauty. Wow, this is particularly nice because we've gone for the, the peel paint here. Then we've gone for some semi sort of fresh paint, but with peeling along the top. And that blends so nicely into the pink scrubbed out paint. I mean, it's just glorious. Excellent use of, of light and shade here. I mean, this thing should be on display at the tape, really. It's just a fantastic work of art. I mean, it takes a lot of harsh sunlight and neglect to get a red car to look that pink and washed out. So it's it's really quite a nice example. Right, so it's HPI clear, this one. MOT until 24th of October 21, so it's got no MOT. Let's say it's past its best in terms of its exterior condition and it's got no MOT, and it's 700 quid. Okay, next. 2008 Dodge Avenger. Look at this. Don't see too many of these on the road, do you? 
I don't think they were the the best cars. A lot of the cars that we sort of inherited from the US didn't really take off too well over here. And a um, few reasons for that. They usually have a huge engine with a reasonably low power output and poor MPG compared to European standards. And the interior and, and fittings and stuff never seem to be as good as, as European cars. Sometimes you get nicer seats and things, but you'll get like an LCD clock in a 2015 car or something. So it never seems to take off over here, but it's an interesting car anyway, isn't it? 2 litre SXT saloon, petrol manual, 74,000 miles. Spares all repair, noisy bearings, logbook to be applied for. Ugh. So it's got no logbook, spares or repairs, noisy bearings, and it's 900 quid. I know it's not that old a car, but when the, a good example of that car probably only goes for, I don't know, two or three grand, I would have thought. Right, 2000 Deu Lanos. You don't see many of these, do you? Again, we've got that flaky paint, which is always nice to see. That bonnet's patchier than my hair. And that takes that takes a bit of doing that. So, uh, yeah, that's great, isn't it? The rest of the paint looks actually quite nice. They've obviously given it a mop and polish, and it's come up nice. But, oh, actually, look at the roof. Yeah, the roof's had it as well. Right, 30,000 miles, this one. Air conditioning... Electric front windows, in-car entertainment, red five seats, call now to book your appointment. Uh, HPI clear. Obviously, if there's no service history or previous MOTs, then you've got to question that 30,000 miles. Pinned as the first comment and link in the description is a link to my is a link to V check, so you can go on and do your used car history check. Uh, the top check's about a tenner, and it's absolutely brilliant. I did it on my um, 4 Series, so you might have seen it in that video. Link to that video is up there. But go and check that out. If you're interested in buying a used car at any price point, really, whether it's £100,000 or 500 quid, just going onto that site can give you some reasons why you don't want to buy that vehicle, and it might give you some reasons to knock a few quid off that vehicle. So strongly suggest you go and do that. And if you use my link, it helps the channel. Everyone's happy. I, there's not much to say about this, is there? I just thought you don't see too many of these on the road. And it's not often you see an object that's more unattractive than my hairstyle. So, right, this one is an interesting one. I think this one, if you held on to it for a few years, could be worth some money. And I don't think we're too far away from things like this turning up at classic car shows. <clears throat> it's a Mark 1 Focus, but it's a saloon. And you didn't see many of those on the road at the time. And you haven't done since, really. I mean, the normal hatchback Mark 1 Focus, I still think it's a cool-looking car. And I think it's the best Focus they ever made. But you put a saloon boot on it, and it just loses all that, in my eyes. Sometimes the ugly ducklings are the ones that become worth a few quid as time moves on. And I think this one could. People love Ford. There's absolutely tons of Ford enthusiasts out there. And uh, I think it's a matter of time before you see these at classic car shows. Probably next five or ten years, these will start turning up. And it'll be, oh, you've got the saloon. Oh, and it's the gear. Wow. It looks pretty tidy. It's got a few marks on it. Uh, let's see what they've got to say about it. 850 quid. 72,000 miles on the clock. Car starts and runs, runs and drives lovely. All been polished, cleaned inside. Looks very nice. Has black interior, which is also clean. Car is all original. No aftermarket parts fitted. Has been well looked after. Clean underneath the car. Only sellings of too many cars and downsizing the collection. Car has MOT till around June, July 2022. Sorry, that wild animal noise was my three-year-old son. There are a few car park dinks on doors, etc., but nothing major. Oil still gold. Had a service with the MOT last June, July. Car ready to drive away. New owner will be very happy. Getting harder to find these low-mile, two-litre uh, focus cars. I, seriously, if you wanted like a future classic, I don't know. You're never going to become rich off the back of it, but you could do a lot worse than one of those if you've got, you know, the inclination and space and time and get that cleaned up and tidied up. Important thing with any cars that you want to be classic cars in future is that they're kept original. Even if someone swapped the stereo out, it can really hurt that and alloy wheels and all that sort of stuff. It all needs to be kept original if you want to to get value out of a, a classic car in future so bit of a joke video really but i would say this one definitely is something you could consider obviously no mention of service history or anything like that on this so you would need to check that out but sometimes with these old cars 
people have got a stack of bills a mile long and they'll usually have the mileage on them. So it might not be a stamped service book, but you know, there might be enough there for you to verify your mileage. And again, something like a V check would probably give you a bit more info on the history of the car. Hope you enjoyed that one guys, just a little bit of a giggle, nothing to take too seriously. Please just take a second to give the video a thumbs up, it makes all the difference in the world. And if you've watched a few of my videos and you haven't already subscribed, please do so now. Thanks very much. Go and check this video out next, YouTube thinks you're going to like it and so do I. See you next time.